هوای حرم به امید کرم بر روی لبم اجل فرجم سوی کرب و بلا به دعا و بکان با هر قدم اجل فرجم اجل فرجم چه خوشان نفسی که به محرم دل بنشینم و تازه کنم غم دل بنویسم از آتش هجر حبیبم و قصه قصه و ماتم دل تو میانه خیل ازایی و من همه جا بروم به بهانه تو همه جا بروم به بهانه تو که مگر برسم در خانه تو از کودکی دلم به غم جد تو خو گرفت از روز حسین دل زارم آب رو گرفت هر گوشه مسیر ز تو می جویم نشانه ای شوق حضور تو به دلم با هر بحانه ای شوم به جز از تو گدای کسی نروم ز درد به هوای کسی تو و نوه و قم به ازای حسین به فدای تو و به فدای حسین به فدای حسن همه جای مسیرم از این و از آن ز تو پرسم و جویم ایان و نهان سخن از تو و حسن تو گویم و بس که به نام تو زنده شود دل و جان تو میانه خیل ازایی و من همه جا بروم به بهانه تو همه جا بروم به بهانه تو که مگر برسم در خانه تو محبوب مردمان به ظهورت غم نهان شود می آیی و زمین ز شکوهت آسمان شود ای صاحب زمان به حضورت دل جوان شود عطل و امید و عشق خبر روز اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله كما هو أحل الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وحبيب إله العالمين سيدنا الممجد بشيرنا المسدد المصطفى العمجد أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين إمام زماننا هذا حجة ابن الحسن روحي وأرواه العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء وجعلنا من خير أعوانه وأنصاره رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر ویئرس ویلکم ٹو دی ہولی شرائن آف امام حسین علیہ السلاۃ والسلام ویلکم ٹو دی ہولی سٹی آف کربلا اینڈ ویلکم ٹو انادر ایپیسوڈ اے ویری اسپیشل اینڈ یونیک سیریز آف پروگرامز سلام یا حسین علیہ السلاۃ والسلام ٹوڈے از 27th آف 
Ziqad and we are getting very close to towards the month of Zilhaj and then of course you know next month is going to be Muharram al-Haram let's begin today's program with Dua Salamati Imam al-Zamana Ajjalallahu Farajam al-Sharif which means a special supplication for the protection and the safety of our 12th Imam Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu was salam Audhu Billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim اللهم كل وليك على حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وهافذا وكائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وارضك توا وتمتعه فيها تبيلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أمين يا رب العالمين أمين يا رب العالمين Dear viewers Let's make a niyya that we are going to present our salam and we are going to recite a short ziyara of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. On behalf of ourselves, our families, friends, neighbors, kul mu'mineen wal mu'minat, kul muslimin wal muslimat, kul marhumin wal marhumat, qurbatan ilallah. So either you can point your finger towards the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam or you can put your hand on your chest in order to show your respect. And inshallah, we'll all together recite a short ziyarah of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, which will attract in return in millions the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will also try my best to glow, go slowly, so inshallah you can repeat it with me. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjal farajahum al-sharif. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن عمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله يا بدم ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسن وعلى علي بن الحسن وعلى أولاد الحسن وعلى أصحاب الحسن ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف and Allah may Allah accept our efforts and give to all of us the best reward with the right of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wassalam. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Dear viewers, as we are getting very close to the month of Zilhaj and in Zilhaj there is an obligatory upon all the Muslims whenever they will uh, fulfill the requirements and they will qualify and they will meet all the conditions uh, wajib upon them Hajj, performing Hajj and Hajj is uh, a refresher course and is very important and the rituals of Hajj are very important and there are lessons that we have to learn even Imam Sajjad has a very famous narration in which that a companion he came back from Hajj and Imam Sajjad in detail asked him that when you did this did you make the niya of this 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 I mean it's in, the, in detail uh, I don't want to go into that narration otherwise it's in detail so which means that he has given inside out the detailed philosophy of each and everything that why this is obligatory all the rituals are why important for us to go and perform them so there has to be some reasons and there has to be some lessons and it's not only those they will go to perform Hajj but even those they never were able to go over there or maybe in future inshallah each one of us will go to perform the Hajj but again we have to learn that what is really there it's not nothing like secret it's very open so and of course you know the impact of that hajj and whenever you go to perform hajj 
has to be upon our own characteristics and through our practicing has to be on society. But sometimes we see that, you know, the uh, impact is not there. So that means maybe majority of people, they don't understand. I mean, you know, they don't uh, realize really that what is the meaning of it and what is the philosophy of it. It's not that you have to perform something without any reason, you know. I mean, there has to be some reasons and the impl implementations will bring, of course, you know, the effects uh, upon our lives and in the society. I mean, you can think about it and discuss about it, about each and everything, like, for example, namaz, praying. You know, if you pray five times, so each and everything, you know, starting with wudu, each and everything, of course, you know, uh, it has its own philosophy, which should have positive impact in our personality and also on the society. Now, I mentioned yesterday that there is a protocol that when you will go over there and you want to enter into the boundaries of Makkah, and that is called Harim Allah, Harim Ilahi, you know, that Harim. So if you want to, whenever you want to, there is a protocol. And a protocol is you, you will have to wear ihram. And otherwise, of course, you know, you have to pay penalty and there are so many other things, you know, the consequences. And as we know that the, the different status of orders, where somewhere it will be recommended, somewhere it will be wajib, somewhere it will be mubah, and something it will be mukru. So it, it becomes in the category of that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't allow you. He loves it. I mean, even he threatens about the penalty. So you will have to wear ihram. You will have to become muhram in order to enter into that boundary, which means that miqat, you know, on that first stop from anywhere you want to enter, <coughs> you have to follow the protocol. Now, ihram itself, there is a big lesson. You know, one, the protocol is that you will have to wear ihram. And then, once you want to become muhram, there is another protocol. There are some terms and conditions. There are something which becomes obligatory upon you. First of all, you will have to wear two white sheets it's for men and for ladies they can wear anything their own dress will become you know ihram but it's better of course you know to have the white clothes that's exactly what people they do now the first most important thing which is wearing ihram white two sheets for all of us and second thing which becomes wajib that once you want to become muhram, you will have to say talbiya. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'ma laka wal mulk la sharika laka labbaik. That's called talbiya. Two. And the third thing is that once you become muhram, there will be things which will become haram upon you. Forbidden. That's also protocol. Now, muhram mean what? You can't swear, you can't marry, you can't have any, you know, I mean, relationship with your own wife temporarily till you are in the condition of ihram, till you won't perform tawaf al-nisa, you can't use perfume, you can't even kill mosquitoes, you can't uh, cover your face, you can't take out the blood, and, uh, you know, 20 four things will become haram upon you or wajib upon you and that condition will be considered even arguing jidal even if you're right i mean you will say you know i'm i'm right that's fine it's not like right or wrong but even doing i mean jidal which means arguing will become haram you can't do that you can't decorate yourself right now. First thing which is important, why it all happens, mutu kabil and tamutu. Allah Rabbul Izzat, He wants to remind you that how helpless you will become. You know, after 
I think first day, the second day, because you can't use fragrance over there. Even the soap which has a fragrance, you can't use it. You'll have to use simple soap, even if you want to. It has to be a special simple soap. I believe the philosophy is that you, you will have to realize your own body smell. You know, when you're wearing a haram now, it's not like, for example, you know, normal life that we're, we have to take care of ourselves, take shower, use shampoo and, you know, fragrance and all that. You know how when we come out. But originally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to feel about it, to, to make sure that who you are, what is your origin and what is the reality you know, sometimes we have to realize, we have to find out. And mutu kablin tamutu, you know, the feelings of death before dying, that's a saying of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that you have to feel about it, you have to think about it, you have to realize about it, that one day you will be like that, you won't be able to do anything. Like in Ihram, you can't even kill mosquito, you can't even hunt your own wife, but now. You can't, you know, enjoy. You can't do anything. Why? Because you're muhram. You have said, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. So in ihram, your status is that you have to learn practically, going through that practices. And then that will make you realize that what is the reality of the life, who you are. Don't follow your fake personality come to know the reality that originally who you are what what are you really you know that will be there and the most important thing which i want to highlight and mention which really uh, i don't see the real impact in our society which should be there two major things one no matter if you are a professor of a university and you have done PhD in literature in any language like in English for example in Persian in Urdu in Pashto in uh, Soheli or in Japanese in Chinese or in French in Mexican it doesn't matter you know I mean whatever the language you will say that I'm PhD and I use the best vocabulary and my accent is pure, you know, because that is a big problem where people will say that, yeah, it's fine, but your accent, you know, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't make any difference. But at the end of the day, yes, of course, you know, people do, they do care about it. So one is language and second is a color. You know that how we are conscious about it and how, of course, it makes a big difference and it, it matters. When you will reach Miqat, first thing what you will do is you will take off all the branded clothes. You know that brand makes clothes expensive because same material but you know with the brand they will say well you know they will say don't you know that this brand and that brand that logo will make it multiply you know I mean you can you, you know everybody all of us we know that if you will take that brand at, at, at a tag out the same dress won't worth that much so branded things you know we use we care about brand. The first lesson we learn at Miqat is no brand. Sibratullah. No color. Just the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One color. No discrimination. You know, and second thing which is most important, your language. Now, use one language. 
which is a language of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, language of Quran, which is Arabic, language of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So all of us, doesn't matter you are coming from Africa, you are coming from Turkey, you are coming from Iran, you are coming from Afghanistan, you are coming from Pakistan, India, you are coming from America, Europe, you are coming from anywhere. And even, of course, you know, you are coming from Arab countries, doesn't matter. But there, doesn't matter you are white, you are black, you are rich, you are poor, you are famous, you are ordinary person, nobody knows you. You have done PhD or you are, have not even gone to the primary school, doesn't matter. If you are beautiful or you are a normal average person, doesn't matter. You are man or woman, you are young or old, doesn't matter. You will have to get over there and you have to mix yourself in that big crowd look alike which mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to teach us that discrimination free society and you know majority of disputes we have on the basis of language Arab, Ajam even in between countries like for example Pakistan there will be Sindhi, Pashtun, Punjabi Bulochi, Mahajar, and so many, you know, other things, you know, Saraiki, and even Potohari, you know, I mean, we know all that, Gilgit, Baltistan, all the languages, bases, differences. In Iran, for example, there is Turk, there is Fars, there is Kurd, there is Yazdi, you know, different kind of, of course, you know, languages. Even in Iraq, you will see, you know, Arab, Kurd, Turkman, you know, all that. In each and every country you will see the differences. But even our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he emphasized at khut, Khutbatul Wida that there is no supremacy philosophy, you know. No one is superior than other. Arab has no superiority upon Ajab and Ajab has no superiority on Arab, you know, I mean, language, color, discrimination, we feel everywhere, people, they fight for that, but Hajj makes you understand, go over there and feel like, you know, you have to have a respect for humanity and mankind, like saying of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib that everyone either is a brother in the creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us all equal are in faith believe you know brother imani or at least at least you know in creation we are all all together with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know equal in that sense so the impact you have to go and learn about it we should not have any dispute, we should not have any fight, we should not have any argument, we should not have any discrimination in society, but unfortunately we do. I mean, starting from internationally, going into national and in, in between, even it goes to tribes, in families. You say that people will be proud of their family, background, tribe, you know, so many other things. I mean, I can talk about like, for example, even in Pakistan, in Pakistan, even in Punjab, you know, you will see that you go everywhere, you realize that, you feel that. But that's exactly what it is. When you go for Hajj, read about it, learn about it. What is the philosophy of Hajj? Going over there, wearing one, one, one kind and type of clothes, white color, one color, Sibghatillah, color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One language, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. You can't say that in English, you can't say that in Urdu, you can't say, you have to say it in, in Arabic. Why? Because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have a unity. Wants to have sense of, you know, look alike. That yes, we are human beings, we are mankind, we are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are believer, we are 
you know, having a faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are a Muslim on the basis of Islam. So either we have to talk about the basis of humanity and mankind or our, 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 our religion, which is, you know, being Muslim. But at the end of the day, unfortunately, we see, you know, step by step, if you see the lessons that we learn when we go to perform Hajj, the implementation and the impact has to be there. It has to be visible in the society that if like 100,000 people from one country, like 1%, I think, you know, the, the percentage is, but you know, whatever from society, when people, they go to perform Hajj over there and whatever they learn, they have to implement upon their characteristics. When they come back now, they are a messenger. They have to be a practical example. They have to be preaching, they have to be telling, they have to be discussing. They have to be, you know, I mean, conveying the message to others. What have we learned? What have we gone through? Otherwise, rituals, I mean, what is the benefit, of course? You know, the benefit is that whatever you learn, you have to implement upon yourself and on, upon society. And you have to convey the message to mankind and humanity. And that's what, that's what exactly it is, that when you come even to perform ziyara. You come to get the marifa, you come to give the allegiance, you come to make sure that you understand the teachings of Imam Hussain You come to know that what is that he loved and why he sacrificed himself and his family. What is the most important thing in our life, in this temporary life where we are here and of course you know we will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's exactly what it is which will make us understand that what are our responsibilities and duties and that will also make us understand what is the reality of this world this temporary world we are not going to be forever over here we have been sent to i mean we have been sent here by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve a goal we are here we are going to go back and that will make us realize you go for Hajj and that will make you realize the philosophy of each rituals over there that you will understand the reality of life you will look at it your vision will be open and then of course you know the implementation will bring a change in the society and likewise is the ziyara likewise is the Hajj likewise are the other things even you go to perform namaz in masjid if you will look at it, you know, that what is there, the lesson that I have to learn five times, I will go and I will start my namaz from Taqbiratul Hiram till Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You will see that each and everything has a lesson that when I finish namaz, I will have to implement upon, upon myself and then of course I try my best to become a practical example for others. That will be a positive impact in this society. Not only that, personally, upon myself but in my family and then of course it goes to society and just imagine that how peaceful how pure how clean society i mean you know could be established because just this thing that where we will be able to try our best to understand may allah give us tawfiq that we will be able to understand what are our responsibilities and duties and we'll be able to perform our responsibilities and duties inshallah may allah give us tawfiq to go and perform hajj and ziyarat of course with ma'rifa again and again and may allah give us tawfiq that we'll be able to learn the lessons and we'll be able to implement upon ourselves and we'll be able to practically convey the messages towards humanity and mankind ameen ya rabbal alameen dear words it's a time for a short break after break we will be back inshallah and then we are going to open our phone lines and we will provide the opportunity to all of you that you can call in and you can present your salam and you can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. You can see the environment of haram, you know, everywhere the banners of the shahada of Imam Taqi, Imam Jabad alayhi salatu wasalam has, has been placed, which means the environment of the, the, the commemoration of the shahada of Imam Taqi alayhi salatu wasalam has started. Stay tuned, we'll be back shortly. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjul farajahum wa sharif salam. Ya Hussain alayhi salatu wa Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjul farajahum wa sharif. Dear viewers, 
Welcome back to the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. Welcome back to the Holy City of Karbala. And welcome back to the remaining program of Salam, Ya Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. Our phone lines are open. The opportunity is there. You can call in and you can present your salam. And you can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah give to all of us more and more tawfiq. May Allah accept our efforts and may Allah give us the best reward with the right of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Like always, I request that whenever your call gets through, please let us know what is your name and where are you calling from and also mute your TV volume and uh, communicate with us through your phone. So inshallah we will be able to accommodate as many as people we can. Uh, this month is uh, Ziqad and today is 27th of Ziqad here in Karbala. Two more programs we will have inshallah. Tomorrow's program and after tomorrow's program and after that of course you know next month Zil Hajj we will come here in your service from the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam and Abul Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salatu wasalam. We have a first caller with us from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Suraya Parveen, Mawla ki darbar mein salam karna chaati hao. Sister Suraya Parveen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah, Assalamu alaikum ya Abna Rasulillah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mawla. Mawla, aapke darbar mein meera salam paunche aur meri hajat ko pura kare. زیارت حضرت عباس علیہ السلام پڑھنا چاہتی ہوں السلام علیکہ یا السلام علیکہ یا ابن آمین یا ابن امیر المومنین السلام علیکہ یا اللہ عبد السالح مطیل للہ ولی رسول ہی اشد انکا قد جاہدتا ونزاہتا وصبرتا حتا تاکل یقین لان اللہ ظالمین لکل لکا من اللہ ولین والآخرین والحق ہم بدر کل جہیم مولا عباس میری بچی کو صحیح کر دے بیماروں کو پوری بیماروں کو صحیح کر دے میری بچی بھی صحیح ہو جائے آبی دے بیمار کے سفرے میں صحیح ہو میری تحسین کی طبیعت اور حالات صحیح ہو جائیں میری زناب پاس ہو جائے میری غزل دستاب ہے سب زندگی اور صحیح کے ساتھ ہیں اور دینی اسلام پہ چلیں پروردگار اللہ مولا مجھے اپنے دربار میں بلائیے مجھے بین پہ ضرور بلائیے گا مولا سب سے انتظار کر رہے ہیں مولا میری پریشانیوں کو دور کرے اور راستوں کے جو مسائل ہیں وہ حل کر کے مجھے بلا لے مولا میرے ملک اور تمام ملکوں کی یہ بیماری دور کر دے تاکہ کوئی آنے میں پریشانی نہ ہوئے امام حسین علیہ السلام میری اندرونی بیرونی سب بیماریاں دور ہوں آبی سے بیمار کے سفر میں مولا آپ کو زندگی سے حصے اور مولا میرا بچہ کی ایک ریزیڈنسی ہو جائے حسین کی ریزیڈنسی ہو جائے انشاءاللہ وہ بچہ کب سے انتظار میں ہے پروردگار عالم ہمیں نیکیوں پر جلنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے اور ہمارے بلائیوں سے دور کرے مولانا صاحب کو زندگی سے دے جو ہماری آواز وہاں تک اور ٹیم پوری سلامت رہے مولانا صاحب سلامت رہے جو ہماری آواز مولا کے دربار تک لے جاتے ہیں مولا پاس بابو المراد میری مراد ہے پوری ہوں میری بچی کو اکسیجن لگی ہوئی چھوٹی سی بچی کو بھی وہ بہت چھوٹی ہے وہ سائچے ساتھ ماں کی ہے وہ آمین یا رب العالمین آمین یا رب العالمین اللہ رب العزت آپ کی دعاوں کو مستجاب فرمائے آپ کے حاجات کو پورا فرمائے آپ کے بیماروں کو شفائے کامل و عاجل نائت فرمائے اور انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ ہمارے مرحومین کی مغفرت فرمائے We have a next call of the sister Shazia from United States of America السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ کا شکر ہے اللہ کا شکر ہے الحمدللہ رب العالمین لطف پروردگار ہے الحمدللہ بسم اللہ میری بسم اللہ بسم اللہ اللہ 
اللہ رب العزت آپ کی دعاوں کو مستجاب فرمائے آپ کی حاجات کو پورا فرمائے توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرمائے عجر عظیم فروان نصیب فرمائے مریضوں کو شفاء کامل عجل نائت فرمائے مرحمین کی پروردگار مغفرت فرمائے آمین یا رب العالمین آمین یا رب العالمین اللہ رب العزت ہم سب کو معرفت کے ساتھ بار بار زیارات مقامات مقدسہ سے مشرف فرمائے انشاءاللہ آمین یا رب العالمین We have a next caller with us from Lardkana, Pakistan السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ علیکم السلام ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ تو مولا علی مدد جی سائن کیا حال ہے ٹھیک ہے خیر وفیت سے ہیں سائن وحید سائن دونے گا اپنی ایک سال ہے مولا ہم کو سلام کرتے ہیں پہلی گزار جی ہے کہ ہر بہن کے لئے مولا سے دنیا فرمائے ہمارے طرف دے گیا ہمیں مولا پر ترسا گر مولا ہمیں بلا لے ماشاءاللہ جی ماشاءاللہ اللہ رب العزت آپ کی توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرمائے انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ اللہ رب العزت آپ کی تمام جی سر انشاءاللہ اللہ رب العزت آپ کی دعاوں کو مستجاب فرمائے آپ کی حاجات کو پورا فرمائے توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرمائے اور انشاءاللہ اس سال بھی اربعین آپ کی مولا حسین کی بارگاہ میں ہو انشاءاللہ موسیقی اور انشاءاللہ ان خدمات کو پروردگار تا ظہور امام زمان عجل اللہ فرجہ ام شریف قائم اور دائم رکھے امین یا رب العالمین جو جو مومن و مومنات مسلمین و مسلمات اربعین ابی عبداللہ حل حسین علیہ السلام میں کربلا آنا چاہتے ہیں اور یہاں پر آگر اربعین کرنا چاہتے ہیں پروردگار ان کو تمام تر وسائل مہیا فرمائے اور ان کی تمام تر رکابتوں کو دور فرمائے امین یا رب العالمین امین یا رب العالمین لیکن میں 
ये भी सजेस्ट करूँगा कि अभी से तैयारी करनी चाहिए इसलिए कि बाज़ात बल्कि अक्सर यही देखने में आया है कि जो काफ़ले वाले होते हैं वो लास्ट मोमेंट तक इंतज़ार करते हैं वीज़ों का और फिर बाद में प्रॉब्लम हो जाती है तो मैं समझता हूँ कि अभी से तैयारी कर लेनी चाहिए जिन्होंने अरबाइन पर आना है ताकि आशूर तक जो है ना उनके वीज़े वगैरह हर चीज़ लग चुकी हुई और टिकट्स बुक हो चुके हुए हों ताकि कोई किसी किस्म की प्रॉब्लम ना हो वैसे तो अल्लाह रब्बुल रबुल्ज़त तोफ़ी के ताफ़र मैं जहाँ तक हो सकता है कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि इस साल पाकिस्तानियों के लिए कोटा थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा हो और बॉर्डर भी खुल जाए जो कि फर्स्ट जुलाई की शुनीद है अल्लाह करे अगर बॉर्डर भी खुल जाए कोटा भी ज़्यादा हो स्मूथली वीज़ा भी मिल जाए तो फिर इन शाला मोमिन मोमिनत जो है पाकिस्तान से एक बड़ी तादाद में अरबाइन अभी अब्दुल्लाम के लिए यहाँ पर आ सकते हैं और इसमें भी कोई शक नहीं है कि कोरोना की वजह से और जो उससे पहले भी वीज़ों की मुश्किल की वजह से एक पाकिस्तान से ज़ायरीन की जो पार्टिसपेशन थी वो थोड़ी डिस्टर्ब होती रही टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन के बाद उम्मीद है कि इस साल इन शह इन शह ये टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन की तरह का एक बड़ा जो है ना वो इज्तम होगा और इन शाला अरबाइन अभी अब्दुल्लाम में हमारे पाकिस्तान से भी ज़ायरीन की एक बड़ी तादाद शिरकत करेगी इन शाला रबुल्ज़त सब की तोफ़ात खैर में इजाफा फरमाए सब को अजर जी फरवान नसीब फरमाए जिन वसाइल की ज़रूरत है परवरदिगार उनको मुहैया फरमाए और जो रुकावटें हैं परवरदिगार उनको दूर फरमाए आमीन या रबालमीन आमीन या रबालमीन जब आप कॉल करते हैं तो जो दुआएं हैं वो फ़कत आपकी इंडिविजुअल नहीं होती वो यकीन रिप्रेजेंटेशन होती है इसलिए कि हम सब की बहुत सारी दुआएं कॉमन होती हैं हर कोई जो है वो जब दुआ मांगना चाहता है तो डेफिनेटली बीमारों के हवाले से मरहुमीन के हवाले से बच्चों के हवाले से रिज़ के हवाले से तोफ़ीक़ात खैर के हवाले से मोहब्बत मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद आसलम के हवाले से तकरीबन ये चीज़ें कॉमन होती हैं अगर कर्ज़ों से किसी को निजात चाहिए बीमारी से परवरदिगार अगर की बारगाह में दुआ करके शफा याबी चाहिए मरहुमीन की मफफ़रत के लिए दुआ करना हो तो तकरीबन ये चीज़ें कॉमन होती हैं कि जब आप दुआ करते हैं तो वो इसीलिए हम जो हैं वो मैं की बजाय हम हमारी यानी इसको जो है ना वो जमा का सीवा इस्तेमाल किया जाता है ताकि सब की तरफ से खुदा की बारगाह में दुआओं को पेश करती और इसमें कोई शक नहीं कि ये फार्मूला है कि जब आप दुआ करते हैं और वो दुआ दूसरों के लिए की जाए खुदा की बारगाह में तो यकीन वो आपके हक में पहले कबूल होती है और वो बायस बनती है आपकी दुआओं की कबूलीत की इसलिए कि उसके अंदर खलूस होता है कि हम खुदा की बारगाह में खुदा की मखलूक के लिए दुआ कर रहे हैं मैं अपने मोमन भाई के लिए बहन के लिए मुखलसाना दुआ कर रहा हूँ विदाउट एक्सपेक्टिंग एनी एनी थिंग इन रिटर्न तो ये जो खलूस है और खलूस के साथ जो खुदा की बारगाह में खुदा की मखलूक के लिए दुआ करना अल्लाह को अल्लाह रबुलजत को बहुत पसंद है कि इंसान जब ये कहता है कि परवरदिगार मोमिन जो बे औलाद हैं उनको औलाद साल ता फरमा अब ज़ाहिर है बे औलाद तो कोई और है लेकिन इंसान अगर उसके लिए दुआ करता है तो अल्लाह को पसंद है कि ये बंदा जो है वो मेरी मखलूक के लिए दुआ कर रहा है और इसी तरीके से जितनी भी और दुआएँ होती हैं बीमारों के लिए परवरदिगार मरीजों को शफाए काम मिलो आज लनायत फरमा जब इंसान मरीजों के लिए एक मरतबा ये है कि इंसान अपने किसी ख़ास करीबी के लिए दुआ कर देगी तो कुल मोमिनत के लिए दुआ करता तो अल्लाह रबुल्ज़त को ये भी जो है वो पसंद है ये गारंटी होती है कि इससे हमारी दुआएँ कबूल होती हैं और फिर जब उसके अंदर वास्ता इमाम हुसैन सलाम का हो जब आप ज़्यारत इमाम हुसैन सलाम पढ़ के अल्लाह की बारगाह में बेहक हुसैन सलाम वास्ता देकर दुआ मांगे तो डेफिनेटली उसकी कबूलीत जो है वो उसके बहुत ज़्यादा मतलब बल्कि गारंटी इमाम जाफर सदलाम की तरफ से दी गई है कि जब आप इमाम हुसैन सलाम की ज़्यारत के लिए आते हैं तो जो पैकेज डील के तौर पर आपको अता किया जाता है उसके अंदर एक ये होता है कि आपकी दुआएं मुस्तजाब होती हैं यानी जो अल्लाह रबुल्ज़त की बारगाह में दुआएं इमाम हुसैन सलाम के सदक़ा में आप पेश करते हैं वो परवरदिगार कबूल फरमाता है 
پروردگار آپ کے رزق میں اضافہ فرما دیتا ہے طول عمر عطا فرما دیتا ہے چہرے پر نور لا دیتا ہے اور ایک عجیب سکون اور اطمینان کی کیفیت ہوتی ہے گناہان انسان جو ہے نا وہ معاف ہو جاتے ہیں اب ظاہر ہے وہ ایک الگ بحث شروع ہو جائے گی کہ جو بہینی و بہین اللہ یعنی کون سے گناہ چونکہ ظاہر ہے ایک حقوق اللہ اور ایک حقوق العباد ہے ان پر انفسائز کیا جانا بہت ضروری ہوتا ہے میں اکثر یہ بات رسیہ کرتا ہوں اس کو سمجھنا چاہیے اور سمجھانا چاہیے آپ نے دیکھا ہوگا کہ اکثر لوگ جو ہے نا وہ بیٹھ کر یہ بات کرتے ہیں وہ کہتے ہیں یہ بندہ مر گیا اب چھوڑیں اللہ کی بارگاہ میں پیش ہو گیا ہے وہ جانے اور خدا جانے یہ جملہ غلط ہے یہ ٹھیک نہیں ہے یہ صحیح نہیں ہے اگرچہ بہتر ہے کہ انسان مرنے والے کی کوئی برائی نہ کرے مرنے کے بعد اس کے لیکن جو اجتماعی برائیاں ہوتی ہیں جو اجتماعی گناہ ہوتے ہیں جو حقوق و لباد ہوتے ہیں وہ نہ فقط یہ کہ بعد میں ڈسکس کیے جاتے ہیں بلکہ ان کو کنڈم کیا جانا چاہیے اب مر گیا تو مرنے کے بعد آٹومیٹکلی اس کے گناہ سارے معاف نہیں ہو گئے ہاں حقوق اللہ جو ہے نا وہ جانے اور اللہ جانے وہ تو دنیا کے اندر بھی پروردگار انسان کو معاف کر دیتا ہے اگر انسان نیت جو ہے نا ماہر جب میں فقط استغفر اللہ و سال توبہ کہہ دے تو پروردگار اس کو گناہوں کو معاف کر دیتا ہے لیکن حقوق و لباد جو ہیں جو معاشرے کے اندر کیے گئے گناہ ہیں جو اجتماعی گناہ ہیں جو گناہوں کی بنیاد رکھی جاتی ہے جس کا تعلق لوگوں کی حرمت سے ہے وہ معاف نہیں ہوتے تو بہرحال خلاصہ کلام جو ہے نا وہ یہ ہوتا ہے کہ یہ بھی ایک ایسے ہی چلتے چلتے میرے جو ہے نا وہ ذہن میں آ جائے کہ بعض اوقات انسان جو ہے نا وہ کہتے ہیں جی کہ مر گیا اب معاملہ ختم ہو گیا کہ چیپٹر کلوز چیپٹر کلوز نہیں ہوتا حقوق اللہ کا چیپٹر جو ہے نا وہ وہ کہتے ہیں وہ تو پھر بہنی و بہین اللہ ہے وہ تو انسان کا اور اللہ کا رابطہ ہے اور پروردگار غفور الرحیم ہے پروردگار ستار العیوب ہے خدا کی بارگاہ میں بیٹھ کر اگر انسان سچی توبہ کر لے تو یوبد اللہ سیاد بالحسنات ہے پروردگار تو گناہوں کو نیکیوں میں بدلنے والا ہے یعنی اگر انسان جو ہے نا وہ سچی توبہ خدا کی بارگاہ میں کر لے تو جو اس کے گناہ ہوں گے وہ نیکیوں میں بدلیں گے لیکن کون سے گناہ وہی گناہ جو بہنی و بہین اللہ جو حقوق اللہ کی زمرے میں آتے ہیں وہاں پر بھی اگر انسان نے کسی کے ساتھ ظلم کیا ہوا ہے کسی کے ساتھ زیادتی کی ہوئی ہے کسی پر تومت لگائی ہوئی ہے کسی کی کریکٹر اسوسینیشن کی ہوئی ہے کسی کا مال کھائے ہوئے تو اس کو پروردگار نے کیوں میں تبدیل نہیں کرے گا کہ یو بدل اللہ سیاد بالحسنات اب ظلم آپ نے کسی پر کی اور آپ کہیں جی کہ اب وہ میرا ظلم جو ہے وہ نیکی میں بدل جائے گا ایسا نہیں ہوگا حقوق اللہ جو ہیں اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہے کہ وہ جو ہے نا وہ ہو جائیں گے یعنی حقوق اللہ جو ہیں وہ معاف ہو جائیں گے نافع کہہ دیا کہ معاف ہو جائیں گے بلکہ ہاں یو بدل اللہ سیاحت بالحسنات ہیں وہ تبدیل ہو جائیں گے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہے تو بہرحال یہ کانسیپٹ کلیئر ہونا چاہیے اس کا پتہ ہونا چاہیے اور یہ جو ایک حرف غلط ہے وہ جو ہے نا وہ نہیں مطلب معاشرے کے اندر ہونا چاہیے مرنے کے بعد انسان ٹرانسفر ہوتا ہے عالم دنیا سے عالم برزخ میں انسان تبدیل نہیں ہوتا انسان وہی انسان ہوتا ہے اگر وہ گناہ گار ہے تو وہی گناہ گار ہے اب مرنے کے بعد کون سی چیز ایسی ہوگی کہ انسان کہا جائے کہ وہ اب مرنے کے بعد خدا کی بارگاہ میں پیش ہوگئے تو وہ معصوم تھوڑی ہوگئے بہر علی نہیں اللہ رب العزت ہم سب کی توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرمائیں اور ہمیں انشاءاللہ اپنے واجبات کو سمجھنے کی اور انہیں ادا کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرمائیں اور پروردگار ہم سب کو جو ہے وہ صحیح معنوں میں ظاہر ابھی عبد اللہ حسین علیہ السلام بننے کی توفیق نصیب فرمائے تمام تر وسائل مہیا فرمائے اور تمام تر رکاوٹوں کو دور فرمائے امین یا رب العالمین ڈیئر ویورس لیٹس ٹیک اے شارٹ بریک ول بی بیک شارٹلی اسٹے ٹیون اللہ مسلی اللہ محمد و علی محمد و اجل فرج احمد شریف سلام یا حسین علیہ ہولی شرائن آف امام حسین علیہ السلاۃ والسلام Welcome back to the holy city of Karbala and welcome back to the remaining program of Salaam Ya Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam Today is 27th of the Qa'id and uh, today is our third program of this series of programs and we are on the edge of the month of uh, Zil Hajj and uh, also the month of uh, Zil Hajj is full of celebrations and commemorations full of events 
and the next month after Zilhaj is going to be Muharram al Haram. I just are trying my best to remind gently that uh, we have to prepare ourselves for the month of Muharram in order to commemorate and mourn the tragedy of Karbala and remember the sacrifice of Abi Abdullah al Husayn Islam, not only ourselves, but also we have to try our best to prepare ourselves so we will be able to convey the message towards humanity and mankind so each and every one will be able to understand what was and what is the philosophy of the Shahada of Imam Hussain what we learned really from the sacrifice of Abi Abdullah al Hussain uh, I see that uh, when we take a break then uh, when Mominin are calling and of course you know nobody picks up the phone because we are on a break so after a break we can take the calls and uh, sometimes they will say that you know we are calling but nobody is picking up the phone well I mean you can also see uh, on the TV that what is going on and then you can call so inshallah we'll be able to communi to will be able to accommodate to all of you inshallah Aziz Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen there are so many reminders which we have to try our best to discuss and talk about and uh, of course you know these reminders naturally are required and is uh, necessarily uh, remind each other because there is a benefit for mu'minin reminder because in a human being of course you know we forget about things and uh, we don't realize sometimes we are so busy we don't pay attention and we don't uh, sit and think about it so when we discuss and when we are listening that's a reminder for us you know about so many things which are very important in our life and uh, I will really recommend and request that while the month of Zilhaj is coming and there will be so many things which is related to us in our life in order to remember in order to learn the lessons and uh, especially from Hajj so we should go in Yarhamakumullah ya nafsi sorry about that you know in order to remind ourselves and in order to learn uh, from the uh, rituals of Hajj, you know, in details, and especially the hadith which is from Imam Sajjad Islam, and he has, you know, gone into the details, and in detail he has guided us. You know, that's what is the beauty that Allah Rabbul Izzat, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, have created a special creation. So they came to this world in order to guide us practically logically so whenever we want to learn something there is no dead and stop sign yes so we can find the practicing of different islam and guidelines from different islam so we can find out and then we can practice inshallah we'll discuss about imam jawad imam taqir islam we see even in the life of Imam Jawad, Imam Taqil at the Shahada he was only 25 years old and when he became Imam he took that uh, uh, position and officially it was announced and he became the successor and the Imam then we will see he was only 8 years old 17 years the duration of his Imama you can see full with guidelines and guidance teaching lessons the debates he had practicing I mean just imagine that eight years old he was when he took this position and then at the age of 25 he got martyred you know by by poison so he got shaheed but even in that 17 years we will see that you know he left for us the lessons uh, we have an actual with us from uh, KPK uh, 
کے پی کے ہنا کیا نے سلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ خیبر پختون خان کے پی کے اسٹینڈس فار خیبر پختون خان جی سلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمۃ اللہ کیانی صاحب کیا حال ہے جی پیر مولا علی مدد ٹھیک ہے خیر وفیت سے آپ تاسو خیر ہے انشاء اللہ الحمدللہ الحمدللہ رب العالمین شکر اللہ جی جی شیزان کیانی صاحب جی 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 الحمدللہ رب العالمین ٹول ٹھیک ہے جی ضرور انشاءاللہ ضرور انشاءاللہ حتمن حتمن انشاءاللہ اللہ رب العزت آپ کی دعاوں کو مسجدان فرمائے اور آپ کی حاجات کو پورا فرمائے آپ کی توفیقات خیر مدافع فرمائے الہی آمین الہی آمین جزاک اللہ جی جزاک اللہ شیعان کیانی صاحب بہت بہت شکریہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ رب العزت آپ کی دعاوں کو مسجدان فرمائے آپ کی حاجات کو پورا فرمائے آپ کو رم سب کو عجر عظیم فروان نصیب فرمائے آمین یا رب العالمین آمین یا رب العالمین پروردگار ہم سب کے رزق میں اضافہ فرمائے اور رزق حلال فروان نصیب فرمائے آمین یا رب العالمین آمین یا رب العالمین سو ول آمین دیٹس اگزیکلی وٹ اٹ از دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو لرن اینڈ وی ہیو ٹو سی وٹ آر دی لیسن سو امام جواد امام تقی علیہ السلاۃ والسلام at that short period of time though comparatively it was not that short time his lifetime was short but you know the duration of his imam is comparatively a little longer because he took that position while he was only eight and then at the age of 25 uh, got the uh, status of shahada but du- during that we see that you know full of lessons his generosity his charity his debates and replying to the questions was raised for him and characteristics so we can find you know even the title the name jawad you know that's exactly what it is it's a reminder so what is the philosophy behind that one the philosophy is that we have to look at into their life their characteristics and we have to try our best to implement upon ourselves we have to learn about it we have to see that you know what are their footsteps so we can follow so you see so many examples allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us so we can literally see we can read in the history that will make us easy you know like because when we see that will make us you can look at him look at them I mean, as in a human being and mankind, there are things which can be done, which are possible. Yes, there are things that psychologically you will say, I can't do it. No. So you can see that, yes, there are human beings. They did it. They could do it. You can do it too. So spiritually, you will get ready. Mentally, you will make your mind. That will give you the determination. As I mentioned earlier, for example, Salat. prayer the one thing which ibadat will make stronger is your determination like fasting that will give you strength and yes i can do it i can control hunger i was fasting for 18 year 18 hours i didn't die because of being hungry and thirsty so that is the determination i mean just imagine for example in the month of holy in the holy month of ramadan you were fasting for the whole month for the duration of 17 to 18 hours in a hot season and then you live in a country or in a city for example where you will have to wait or you are traveling now you won't find anything halal and you will have to wait and you will you will have to drive one more hour so then this fasting will give you the determination that yeah you know what i was fasting for 18 hours i didn't die so i can hold on for one one more hour and i can go to the next place and i can find over there halal and i can have only halal so that determination will 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 give you be on the right path kind of sense why because you know you have gone through a practical practicing now you have come to know that you know what you know even if for 18 hours you are thirsty and hungry in a hot weather you won't die you can survive 
you can do it because you have practiced it already for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what is the outcome of course you know these rituals is this obligation worshipping of Allah so these ibadat and worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will make you have absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you will be able to find out that yes you can do it it's possible so, so that is the main lesson which we learn from our worshipping prayer will give you the sense of organization will give you the determination will strengthen you that yes you know that's exactly what it is you can get up early in the morning to pray two cycle namaz and then while you are tired you can perform four cycle namaz and nothing will happen which mean like for example it's doable but you know at the end of the day mentally you have to prepare for that one and there you come reminder that when we talk about it we remind each other we discuss about the the practical examples of Aymal and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their teachings and their sayings and all the rituals the philosophies of, of that one sacrifice of Imam Hussain his companions his brother Abbas his loyalty so then what happens of course you know when you, we read it when we think about it when we discuss about it at the end we will be determined that yes we have to practice and that will be the outcome that we will implement upon ourselves and through our practical examples and practicing we will convey the message to us this is the circle this is the cycle which has been you know going on and on for thousands and thousands of years you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran Qasas al -Anbiya, the stories of prophets so we could learn I mean what was the use of mentioning the stories of Hazrat Yusuf Hazrat Nuh Hazrat Zakaria Hazrat Musa Hazrat Isa Hazrat Yahya Hazrat Yunus each of the stories are so we learn from those stories that will give us the sense and not only that but you know next step only reading is something else but the more impact is visualizing and of course you know if we can watch it and that's exactly what it is the importance of media and we see that two days I mean like for example Mukhtar we studied about it we read about it but at the end of the day when you watch that will you know sit in your mind and that will clear so many things when you see the environment when you will visualize it and when you will see in the imaginations that will of course you know have more more impact and that's what exactly we need to do we have to go on through the process we have to try our best dear viewers remind each other think about things discuss about things sit and have a time about making your vision clear and try to uh, strengthen your determination and your intention and you know clear path and then through the teachings of Aima go into a practically practicing whatever the teachings you will get may Allah give to all of us tawfiq ameen ya rabbal alameen and not only that being a parents and olders we are uh, and practical examples for our youth instead of seeing something show them practically and that will have a more and more impact and that's exactly what is primarily goal for each and everything these worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prayers performing hajj paying homes, zakat, jihad, amr bil ma'roof, each and everything you will see over there, fasting, hajj, performing hajj, all the rituals in detail, you will see that it has its own purpose. So, first step, reminding each other. And of course, you know, there are going to be some requirements 
about reminding, first you will have to understand before you want to remind others things. And when you want to understand things, you will have to read, you have to study, you have to discuss. I mean, you will make yourself uh, understand those things. Make sure that you do understand and then it will come to the next step that where you want to remind others, where you want to convey the message through your practicing. May Allah give to all of us more and more tawfiq. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Those people, they have requested to pray for their loved ones. May Allah accept their prayers. And those people, they are sick. May Allah give them early recovery. And those people, they are already gone back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive their sins. And may Allah give them the highest status in paradise. And may Allah also... Uh, make us die on the right path with the right of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen those people they want to come for Ashur or Arba'een I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that O oh Allah give them tawfiq remove all the obstacles and hurdles and not only that but also uh, whatever the assistance they need uh, may Allah provide them you know uh, Muharram and uh, also I believe Arba'een this year is coming in a peak season especially Ashur and peak season mean what? It's a summer vocation and around the globe people are traveling everyone is traveling, You know, most of the people they are traveling because schools are off in America and Europe all around the uh, globe You know, so that's why tickets are very expensive and I believe that of course that's a test for so many people and uh, it's not that uh, cheap, you know, it is a little expensive comparatively. So, well, I mean, may Allah uh, assist uh, all of us and may Allah give to all of us more and more tawfiq that we'll be able to, inshallah, uh, uh, get uh, this tawfiq that we'll be able to come and we'll be able to, inshallah, participate in Ashur and also in Arba'een, Ya Abi Abdullah, Ameen, Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. May Allah accept our prayers and may Allah give to all of us more and more tawfiq. Dear viewers, we are getting uh, towards the end of our program. So inshallah, you can also make the niyyah. We are going to recite uh, uh, Surah Fatiha and three times Kul Hawallah and five to Amoyuchi for all Mumin and Muminat and for all Marhumin and Marhumat Qurbatan Ilallah. So you can also make the niyyah about your Marhumin and Marhumat and uh, also for Ibn Yajib is for all Mumin and Muminat, they are sick. May Allah give them the early recovery. And those people, they have uh, requested to pray for them or for their loved ones. Allah knows better, you know, what is in our hearts. So may Allah accept our prayers and our efforts and give to all of us more and more tawfiq, inshallah, Aziz, and give us the best reward with the right of Imam Hussain, alayhi salatu wasalam. So you can see also these people right now at the zari of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam and they have of course you know gathered the visitors you can see comparatively working days but still mashallah and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen so dear viewers let's make a niya that we are going to recite uh, uh, fatiha and uh, three times kul hawalla and five times mayuji بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد 
وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُهُوًا أَحَدٌ اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير أما يجيب المتر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 یا پروردگار یا خالق اکبر یا خالق کائنات یا غفور یا رحیم یا کریم یا غفار یا ستار یا حیقیم یا اللہ ہماری اس قلیل سی بات کو اپنی بارگاہ میں حدیت المقبول و منظور فرما پروردگار یا خالق اکبر یا خالق کائنات جو جو مومنین و مومنات مسلمین و مسلمات بے اولاد ہیں اولاد صالح عطا فرما جو جو بیمار ہیں بیمار کربلا کا صدقہ شفاء کامل و عجل انایت فرما جو جو پریشان حال ہیں پروردگار ان کی پریشانیاں دور فرما پروردگار ہمارے گناہان کبیرہ و صغیرہ معاف فرما ہمیں آئندہ گناہان کبیرہ و صغیرہ سے محفوظ فرما ہمیں اپنے حفظ امان میں رکھ شرع شیطان سے جن و انس کے شر سے محفوظ فرما پروردگار ہم سب کا خاتمہ بالخیر فرمانا پروردگار ہمارے مرحومین کی مغفرت فرما ان کی قبروں پر خصوصی رحم و کرم عطا فرما ان کی قبروں کو جنت کے باغوں میں سے ایک باغ قرار عطا فرما پروردگار ہمارے بارم امام امام زمان عجل اللہ فرجہم الشریف کا جل ظہور فرما ہم سب کو ان کی زیارت سے مشرف فرما ہم سب کو ان کی کماحقہ معرفت نصیب فرما پروردگار جو مقروض ہیں ان کو قرضوں سے نجات عطا فرما پروردگار ہمارے رزق میں رزق حلال میں برکت نصیب فرما پروردگار یا خالق اکبر یا خالق کائنات یا غفور یا رحیم یا کریم یا غفار یا ستار یا حیقیم یا اللہ جو بے گناہ قید ہیں ان کو اسیران کربلا کا واسطہ ہے قیدوں سے رہائی عطا فرما پروردگار ہم سب کی توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرما پروردگار ہمیں مبلغ عملی بننے کی توفیق نصیب فرما پروردگار ہمیں اپنے واجبات کو سمجھنے کی اور ان پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما پروردگار مسافروں کا سفر بے خطر فرما پروردگار ہماری نوجبان نسلوں کو دین اسلام کو سمجھنے کی اور اس پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما پروردگار ہمیں آپس میں پیار محبت کے ساتھ رہنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما پروردگار مقامات مقدسہ کی حفاظت فرما پروردگار مراجع عظام مجتہدین علماء حقا کا سایہ ہمارے سروں پر قائم اور دائم فرما پروردگار دنیا میں جہاں جہاں ازادار ہیں ازاداری کی تیاری کر رہے ہیں پروردگار سب کی توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرما پروردگار والدین کو بچوں کی خوشیاں دیکھنا نصیب فرما جو والدین اپنے بچوں کے حوالے سے پریشان ان کی پریشانیاں دور فرما پروردگار تو دلوں کے راز بہتر جانتا ہے جس جس نے بھی ہمارے ذمہ دعائیں لگائی ہیں سب کی جائز شرعی حاجات کو مقبول و منظور فرما پروردگار ملک عزیز پاکستان کو سلامتی عطا فرما ہر قسم کی سازشوں سے محفوظ فرما پروردگار اندرونی بیرونی سازشیوں کو اگر قابل ہدایت ہدایت فرما ویلہ نے اس کو نابود فرما پروردگار ملک عراق ایران لبنان سیریا یمن پروردگار جہاں جہاں مکتب اہل بیت علیہ السلام کے ماننے والے سب کی توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرما سب کو اپنے حفظ امان میں رکھ پروردگار یا خالق اکبر یا خالق آئینات یا غفور یا رحیم یا کریم یا غفار یا ستار یا حی یا قیم یا اللہ ہم سب کی دعاوں کو مستجاب فرما توفیقات خیر میں اضافہ فرما ربنا تقبل منا انکا انتا سمیر علیم برحمتک یا ارحم الراحم دیر ویرز تینک یو فور واشنگ ان پارٹسپیٹنگ ان ٹوڈیز پروگرام انشاءاللہ تمارو اگین وی آر گوئنگ تو ریو یو سروس فرم دی ہولی شرائن آف امام حسین علیہ السلام ٹیک کیر آف یور سیلف ان ڈون فرگیٹ اس ان یور پریئرز ویل سی یو تمارو والسلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ خدا حافظ